Okay, so today it's day two of arithmetic uh, sequences. We're also talking about some geometric ones. If I start with seven and ten, I don't know what's coming next. It depends if it's going to be arithmetic or if it's geometric. If it's going to be arithmetic, I can find the common difference by going ten minus seven, and that'll be three. And that means if I'm adding three each time, then the next would be 13. If it's geometric, though, then I do the common ratio, and that's this divided by this, 10 divided by 7 instead of 10 minus 7. And that would be 10 sevenths. I would just leave it that way. And then that means I'd multiply by 10 sevenths and multiply by 10 sevenths, and then this would become 100 divided by 7 or 100 sevenths if I was going the geometric route with this. All right, now, I hope that you can handle it when I change this to instead of a 7 and a 10, I can make it 4K and 3K plus 7. What's the common difference? What's the common ratio? Don't overthink this. Pause for a second while you give that a try. Okay, common difference. Difference means subtract. You just have to subtract them. Don't overthink this. So which one should I subtract from which one? Always take the second one and subtract the first one. So 3K plus 7 minus 4K. So that would be negative K plus 7. I know that's not satisfying because it isn't like 2. But it's got a K in it, but that's okay. All right, next. Ooh, okay, get it? Right. Anyway, that has a K in it too. If you did geometric, you'd go 3K plus 7 and then just divide by 4K. Don't expect that this thing is going to always like cancel and be nice. It doesn't necessarily do that. There we go. Now, how could you actually use that? All right, here's a typical question. If, if I were to go to the next level and say there's a third term... And it is 5K um, or negative 5K plus 2. Now what could I do? Would you agree that in a sequence like this, 10, and then I'm going to make it drop by 3, 7, drop by 3, 4, do you get that this, no, I should go the other way around, this minus this, should be negative 3, is how I get the common ratio. But would you also agree that this minus that has to equal that minus that? You know what I'm saying? They have to be equal to the same thing. So, let's assume for a moment that this is arithmetic, where it's a subtract kind. And we would be able to say then that this minus this should be equal to this minus this. See what I'm saying? Doesn't that sound like an equation that would only have k's in it? and therefore you could solve it. Every now and then, are there equations that are unsolvable? There is. Sometimes there's no solution. Okay. But if there is a way to do it, this would be what would find it. Would you please set that up? One big old nasty long equation. This minus this should equal that minus that. We're going under the assumption right now that it's arithmetic. And would you please solve and find k? I'll pause for a second while I give that a try. Okay, so you should have had 3k plus 7 minus 4k has to equal negative 5k plus 2 minus, i got to be careful here because there's two terms. If I just say this, minus 3k plus 7, do you get I just subtracted only the 3k? i got to put a parenthesis on that. You catch that? Do that or distribute the negative to both parts. Because this minus this has a subtract on a two-term item, a also known as a binomial, it has to be distributed to both parts. Okay, so I'm going to have 
on negative k plus 7 has to equal, and then that's negative 3 and negative 5 means negative 8k, and then the 2 minus the 7 makes uh, minus 5. Correct me if you see me doing something wrong here. I'm going to add k to both sides. 7 equals negative 7k minus 5. I am going to add 5. 12 equals negative 7k, and then k is going to work. It's 12 sevenths. Negative 12 sevenths, exactly. Any of you guys get to the same place? Okay, cool. All right. So, if I give you a really simple one, be really happy that it's that simple. But it's not likely on your test that you'd have something as simple as that. If it was, you'd be able to just look at it and go, oh yeah, that's arithmetic or geometric. And here's the next term, or here's the 23rd term. That would be a typical question. And there's a formula for this kind. If it's arithmetic, it's one formula. If it's geometric, it's another formula. Would you please pull up those two formulas from your memory banks and tell me what the formula would be for that black one, and then what's the formula for this red one? It's the formula that works for the black one and the formula that works for the red one. If you don't remember, they both start with a sub n, as in any term. a sub n is in any term. Pausing to give you some time to try. Okay, top one appears to be adding 10 each time. If I wanted to check, I could always go 12 minus 2 is 10. 22 minus 12, oh, it's also 10. So, yeah, must be the common, what? Common difference is 10. So, if you're going to use the, here's the generic form of the formula. A sub n is equal to a plus d times, now you can put the d at the end. I personally like to put it in front. The difference times n minus 1. Now, is, and is there anything that, if this formula is about this, is there anything I can know for sure that I can put in it? What? What's 2? The A is 2. You're correct. The A stands for the first term of it. It is 2, for sure. Is there anything else that is for sure about the formula? D, yeah. What is the difference? 10. That has to be a 10. Okay, so that's how you take the general formula and you customize it to match this guy. Now, what's good about the formula that we have there? It can tell us any term. So if I want the 45th term, okay, I can figure it out. All right. I could put 45 here. And a sub 45 would be 45 minus 1 is 44. 44 times 10, 440 plus 2, 442. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Like, if you tried to do that in your head, and I just told you, you know, you add 10 each time, what's the 45th term? Doing that in your head would not be so nice. It's not that bad. If you remember that it started at 2, and that year would be 1 less than, so if I want the 45th term, I would not use 45 additions of 10. It would be 44 additions of 10, because you, you always do one less loop than the term you want. All right. So, now for multiplication down below. And it starts out, generic form of the formula, a sub n is, but it's different because this is geometric. Did I suggest any? Who am I supposed to talk to? It's row one, person two. It's you. What's the formula for this guy? A sub 0 or just A, and then that's fine. And then times R to the N minus 1, you are correct. Good. You kind of threw me off there when you say A sub 0. You're right, that totally works, but you could just say A also. Plain A, kind of the default for A sub 0. All right, and what is A in this case? 1. And then what's N? Well, we don't know yet. We don't know which term we want. Okay. And then what's R? R is 6. It's multiplying by 6 each time. It comes from this divided by this, or that divided by that, and it's 6. So I can put a 6 right there. And cool, I've customized this formula to now work for this. Now, 
do you get that so far I've always just said, tell me the like 33rd term. What if instead I said one of the terms is 900? Which one is it? You get what I'm saying? If I did that, what would you do with the 900? Add me here, and you could solve. Do you get what I'm saying? All right. Now, I just totally pulled that number out of the air. Is it possible that that's not actually going to work? Well, yeah, I might give you a decimal answer. And let's think about this for a second. You guys know how to do logs, right? Do you get how you could solve this thing with a log then? And n might be some decimal. Like, it's not the 51st term, but it's the 51.3 term or whatever. All right, take a moment, solve that with a log. That's why we did logs before we did this. <laughs> Appreciate your enthusiasm. I'll pause for a second while you're working on that. Okay, so to solve this puppy, I would be thinking in terms of getting rid of this one. Of course, there's no n there. And so I'm going to go log base 6 of 900 is equal to n minus 1. And then basically just add 1 to both sides. So I just got to figure out that. I can't do it in my head unless I know that 6 was a, you know, like 900 could be made with a 6 to the power of whatever. But it doesn't seem to work real nice. What did you get for an answer? Row 3, person 3. That's you. And that's it. Yeah. Raise your hand if you got four point something. All right, good. Can anybody be a little, a little bit more specific? <laughs> four point, four point eight ish. Okay, about four point eight. So again, it was in between whole numbers, and so we don't use parts of that. Of you know, so you could say it was not a integer or a, or a rational number. Uh, no, I shouldn't say rational number. It wasn't an integer or a um, whole number term. Okay. I think what we've just done there is enough so that I can put you on this slide and you can answer that question, no big deal. But I want to warn you, it'll have a quadratic in it. It'll come out to something like this. 24x squared plus 16x plus 36 or something awful like that when it's all done. How did they get there? Well, remember that this divided by this has to be the same as that divided by that. Okay. And once you get it all set up, you're going to get a quadratic. How are you going to solve that thing? I recommend that you use your calculator. And you can either A, graph both sides, see where they cross. B, use a calculator to do the quadratic formula. Either one would work. It's going to take you a minute. I'm going to pause for a minute and see if you can handle number five with a partner. Okay, so I'm just uh, setting it up here. And I'm saying that 5k plus 4 over k plus 4 should equal, that's this divided by that, should equal that divided by that, k plus 20 divided by 5k plus 4. All right. Now, when you cross multiply and solve, you get a quadratic here and you get a quadratic there. Uh, and when you just put it all to one side, and set it equal to zero. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You could have graphed right there. You could have made, once you get this quadratic for this, you could have set it equal to that quadratic for that. You got two quadratics, and they'll look kind of like this and this, and they'll cross somewhere, and that's your answer. That works. Or, I actually put it all into one big equation. I don't know if anybody else did. Did you get 24k squared plus 16k plus 64? Did I get the same thing? Cool. Oh, negative 64. I just read my writing wrong. Sorry about that. Now, if you can factor it, you should, but good luck factoring that. Holy smokes. 8 comes out of everything, and uh, it simplifies down, but 
it's still uh, not it's not nice. I'll factor it further and go 8 comes out and I get 3k squared plus 2k minus 8. And then, did anybody find the way to factor it all the way down? Let's see what you get. Okay, plus 2. Let's see if that actually works. Outside, 6, negative 4 makes 2. You got it. Very nice. Now, could you have done it by graphing two? Absolutely. And that's what I, or, or just using quadratic formula. That would also work right up here. I'll probably be almost as fast to use a quadratic formula right there than to do all that factoring. But you should have got k equals negative two is one option. And then this option, 3k minus four has to equal zero. So 3k equals four. So k is four thirds. Four thirds, one and one and one third, or negative two. Okay. Nice job on the factoring. When only one kid pulls it off, that's impressive. Now I know a lot of you weren't even trying to factor it because you know that you knew that these are ugly numbers and you might as well use a calculator and graph it. Alright. Some people are like, okay, what do you mean by the lines will cross? There's only one line. It's a big parabola. But then it's y equals zero is the other line. You know what I mean? You got your big parabola, and then it's where does it touch? And it touched at negative 2 and positive 4 thirds. Okay. All right. Now look at number 7. Out of curiosity, how many groups have already had a chance to start number 7? All right, then I'll start it with you. Okay. The sum of the first and third terms of a geometric sequence is 40. All right. What on earth should we use for the first and third terms? Are you just going to make up a number? But if you just make up a number, that's kind of dangerous. Uh, you know, like, I know I could say, you're right, 10, and uh, I see it's just 30. You could just make up numbers that would add up to 40, okay? But then when this gets into the sum of its second and fourth terms is 96, you're just going to try to guess and check your way to it. It's not going to work on a test. So what do we want to do? We want to have the first term be n. Then what's the second term? All right, I'm going to go with this uh, N, Y, P, and D, New York Police Department, uh, as my four terms. And the sum of the first and third terms, that makes it really easy. N plus P has to be 40. There's an equation. How many equations will I need if I have four variables? Four equations, okay. Well, the sum of its second and fourth terms is 96. Which one's the second term? y plus d is what 96 now i want to challenge you there are more equations here you're just not seeing them yet i'm just going to say this it's geometric So, somebody's just got it. It's geometric, so give me an equation you can use N, Y, P, and D in. Or maybe not all of them. Y divided by N, I heard somebody whisper that, is equal to P over Y. Very good. That's a separate equation. That's our third equation. And now we just need one more equation. Can we do that? Sure we can. We haven't used D yet. So, what would be next? Hint, P over Y would have to equal D over P. All right. 
There, I had four variables. I have four equations. I can solve it. Now, I say it's six minutes. Eh, it took me six minutes just to set it up. Okay, now I'd have to do a lot of substitution. You know, since I know that n plus p is equal to 40, do you get I could solve that for n and say n is equal to 40 minus p? And then wherever I have an n, I can go stick a 40 minus p in there. And in the place that I have n right there. So I could put this right there. And then I got two y's in that equation. That's good. Maybe I can figure out what y is equal to. Oh, I know what y is equal to. y is equal to, get this over to the other side, 96 minus d. And then eventually you'll get it all the way down where you have only one variable in an equation. And you'll be like, oh, so d plus 6 minus 4 or whatever is equal to 28. And if you get it down to just one variable, you can solve for that. I'm not going to pretend like this is easy. This is not easy. But do you understand where I got that from? Do you understand where I got this from? With the next two being divided, the ratios have to be equal to each other. And do you get where we, well, they just told us this one, n plus b equals 40. It said that sum of the first and third is 40. That's where we got this one from. All right, so remember this theme. If I have seven variables in, the, in a problem, then I need what? Seven equations that involve those variables to be able to solve it. Okay. So I think you got enough where you can actually get the homework going here. Uh, we already did day one now. It's day two. Starts right here. And let me get started with you. It says, find the tenth term of the sequence whose first four terms are blah, 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 blah. Well, right off the bat, I'm looking at it and I'm going, I think it's, which one is it? Arithmetic or geometric? I think it's arithmetic. Then I would go right to the formula. A sub n is equal to, and I'm going to write the whole thing out because I'm doing this on a video. If I was at home, I'd probably just start sticking numbers in because I know what this formula is in my head. Okay, but there it is. And now I'm starting to stick the numbers in. It starts with an 8. The common difference is, careful, not 4, negative 4. And then what term do I want? Tenth term, so that's sub 10. 10 minus 1. Then I can do this in my head. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. Negative 36 plus 8. A sub 10 is whatever negative 36 plus 8 is. Help me out. Negative 28. Thank you. Okay. Now, here's another one that, like we just did a minute ago. If that, that, and that are three consecutive terms of arithmetic, well then, remember, last time we were doing geometric, that was much more painful. That had to be this divided by this. Now it's arithmetic, so it's that minus that. It's going to work out much nicer. All right. And remember, uh, if you just write that, you can't solve it from just that. You want to use the other one. Because if all I say is 2n plus 1 minus n plus 5, and I even remember the parentheses, it, it is not equal to anything, right? So just setting up that first one doesn't solve it. I got to have the other one. Otherwise, I don't have equals what, you know? How are you supposed to solve it unless you have something that's equal to? All right. So anyway, those two are obviously signed. And the last two, uh, or this, the, the ones on this page, uh, are also assigned. And let me see if this is gross or well, that's not too bad. All right. I do tend to try to cut your assignments down a smidge, so I think I will say that number eight is optional. If you like you need practice because you're not good at this, do number eight. Eight is optional. Okay. All right. Now i we putting stuff in the grade book just like last night. I went back and put in one. I'm going to probably do this one as an in-class grade. 
uh, as in we're going to exchange iPads and grade them and then submit them. If you already have submitted it, it's no big deal. You can always submit another one. You can have a third submission or whatever. Okay, but uh, just be prepared to grade. I want to get more in the grade book because we don't have that much in the 15% uh, category. Uh, and that means the value of it's increased, right? If there's only like five things in there and it's a 15% category, what are they each worth? If there's five things in and it's a total of 15% of your grade, they're each 3% of your grade. You know what I'm saying? So do your homework for the next few weeks. It'd probably be smart. Okay. Answers are posted too. Can't complain too much about that. All right. That's all I got for you for today.